What we're going to be going over here is linear regression and we're going to be testing for the constant variance of our residuals. Okay, so we're going to start out here looking at our XY coordinate graph where we got two different data sets that we have plotted here. Along our x-axis, that's going to be our independent variable and along our y-axis would be our dependent variable. Okay, so just looking at our two different sets of data here. So for our first model, our regression line is this green upward sloping line, and that's represented by these data points here, these little red squared data points. And really what we're going to be checking for is the change in variance along our regression line. And we're going to be looking at two different regression lines or two different data sets here. So for this first model A here, we're going to have a what they call a constant variance as we move up along our x-axis here, our variances between our different points are going to be constant, showing by this little area, arrow here. They're going to stay within some range, some constant range up here. And then for our other model here, this is with that blue upward sloping line represented by these little blue circles. It's going to be just the opposite. We're going to start out with some uh, variance here, a low variance, but as we move up this line, our variance is going to become greater and greater and greater here. So what we're talking about here, and I'll probably pronounce these names wrong here, this is what we're going to be looking at here. The heteroscedastic non-constant variance that we'd be looking at with our blue set of data here with that blue line, where we start out with a low variance and as we move up our line or along our x-axis increase our uh, independent variable, we're going to get a greater and greater variance here. And again, it's called a heterostatistic non-constant variance here. And that's where we're looking at our error variances, and they're going to be what we call multiplicative here because they just increase as we move up the line here. Now, with the other variance here, we would call that with our green line here where we had our constant variance, they would call that a homos cladastic or a constant variance here. Probably pronounced it wrong, but just look at it in terms of a constant variance here. So we're going to be testing two different models here and see how we test for the, really for the non-constant variance here, how we do that test here. And really we're going to be looking at it in terms of this residual squared here. So when we're talking about a residual squared, we're taking and measuring our actual, in this case we're looking at the change Y here. We're going to take all those different points in our different data points here. We look at the actual y value and compare it to the predicted y value here by our line here. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be determining those our residuals here, and then we're going to uh, square those residuals. So the residuals act as errors here. So you can see with our blue model here, our blue line where we got that non-constant variance, we're going to probably have low, or shown by this green area here, uh, lower residuals. And as we move on and on up our line, we're going to get greater and greater residuals here. So that's what we're going to be testing for here. All right, so let's go down and let's get maybe another picture of what we're looking at here. Okay, so what we're talking about this heteroscedastic uh, non-constant variables here, looking at it here in this image here. So you're going to start out with showing it again here, the, the data points, they keep on expanding here. We have tight data points here according to our regression, our green regression line here. So our variance when we start out here is a lower variance. We don't have a great degree of a change in our data points here. But as we move up our line, you can see our variance gets more and more here. So we have a multiplicative effect here, and just you can see it visually inspecting it here. And what this does here, it's just going to give us, if we just go through our regular regression here, we're going to get excessive standard errors due to this here. So if you look at it in these terms here, just say, let's say, looking at our x1 point here, x2 point, x3 point, as we move along our end increase our independent variables, really the slope or our line changes here. The slope of our line changes with respect to that multiplicative effect here on our variances here. So you're going to have a different uh, uh, model or regression line, y equals m the slope times x, the dependent independent variable times some b intercept here. Okay, so this is what we're going to be testing for here for this heterostatistic non-constant variance that we're looking at with those two, uh, two different sets of data. Okay, so let's look at it in terms of uh, uh, Excel here, just doing an Excel uh, 
regression analysis here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be testing for what they call the Bruch Pagan test here. Again, I may have pronounced that wrong here, but this is where we're going to be checking for our area error variances that are equal, that is there's non-change and they're equal as we move up a regression line versus the multiplicative effect here for those different error variances that we're talking about. Okay, so the first thing we have to do, we have to come do two different regressions here. And I'm just showing it on an Excel worksheet here where we've got our A column would be our X independent variable amount here. And really I have 12 different data points that I looked at here. And then our B column here, this would be a Y or our dependent variable here. And then in C, this is where we're going to get some residuals here based on regressing our X and Y here. So before I go on to that, just remember here in Excel, we would have used the data, selected data analysis, and we would have selected regression, filled out our different uh, items that we want to look for and ranges and so forth for the regression here. Okay, so back to our residuals here. So we would have run a regression here. What we would have done is we would have regressed our X independent against our Y dependent variable here, and we got some residual amounts shown here. So the second thing we have to do, we have to do a dec second re a regression here, and that's where we're going to take these residuals here that we have for our X and Y uh, variables here, and we're going to square those residuals. We just square whatever amounts it is. So uh, for Excel here in column C, we would just take C1 and square it, C2 and square it, and so forth, and we're going to get these squared residuals here. So that's what we're going to be working with. And this is the key here. The residuals here, those residuals, we squared those values here. And that's what we're going to be doing. So we take those, res uh, those residuals that we've squared here, and we regress them against our X independent variable here. So we have the second regression here. Uh, the regress our X against our residual squared here and we're going to come up with our calculations that we have here. So that's what we're going to be testing for here. Okay, so let's go down here and let's look at our Excel output and look at what we're going to be doing here. Again, this is this Bruch Pagan test here. We're testing for the header, scedastic, or that varying uh, degree in our variance here, or vari variance here. Okay, and really what that is telling us, we got this LM here equals our R squared times M the number of uh, uh, data that we're looking at here. So the LM here is really what they call a Lagrange multiplier in mathematics, and that equals our R squared. That's what we're going to take off our Excel sheet here times our number of variables here. So let's look at how we got how we got our Lagrange multiplier LM value here. In this case, it's 0.56. So in our regression analysis here with the Excel, uh, we get. I'm looking at looking at A, the, the model A here, that was that green line here, and that's going to have the constant variance that we're going to be looking at. So I've got the regression that I did before here for our model A. And then a model A, this is the tested amount. This is where we squared those residuals and we run a regression with our X independent variable against the squared residuals. Okay, so back to our equation here. So taking off our A, our tested model here based on those residual squared, our R squared value between the X independent and a residual squared is 0.0465. And a few more decimal points here. Put that in your equation times the number of data points here. And we have 12 data points here. Put that in your equation, multiply them out, R squared times number of data points, R squared here number of data points here equals 0.56 here. Okay, so what this LM or Lagrange multiplier is based on is a chi-squared distribution, distribution shown over here. So first, on, let's just understand what we're looking for. We've got to come up with a critical point here in our chi-square chi distribution. And just using Excel here, it's equal C-H-I-S-Q and then put a dot I-N-V, the inverse dot R-T here for the right, it's for the right tail here. And the probability we're going to look at is a 95% confidence level or a 5% probability here. And that was 0.05 it put in. Degrees of freedom, we only have one degree of freedom with this linear equation here. Put that in. Hit our enter key here, and we're going to come up with a, tri a critical value here at 5% here for our chi-square, 3.841459. So 
putting that into our chi square distribution here at 3.84 here. So what we're saying here, this is being our critical point here at a 5% uh, probability level or 95% confidence level here. So if we have a greater chi squared here, yes, then we're going to say we have a heteroscedastic a relationship where you have that changing variance here. If it's below uh, our critical value here, 3.84, then no, we don't have a header or that changing variance here. And in our case here, we only come up with our Lagrange multiplier here, 0.56. So we definitely don't have any uh, uh, changing variance here based on that here. Okay, so that's our that's the basic test we could do here. So we could just stop right here and say, it based on that for our first uh, set of data here, no, we don't. It is a would be homoscedastic or a constant variance here because it's below our critical value here on a chi square distribution. Just remember, a chi square here is related to the whatever value we have here with the Lagrange multiplier that we come up with. So if we further looked at it, just looking at our F typical F test here with uh, the Excel here, let's just look at that here. So our model A tested, we're going to go, let's just look at a model A before, that's just taking our regression X independent variable times our Y, or regressing our y, X independent versus our Y dependent. We come up with an R squared here, 0.52, sort of a moderate uh, correlation here, or 52% here, versus taking the regression here for our X independent against that the R squared here, you can see it's 0.04, very low, almost negligible here, any relationship here. And that's really correlates to our header, our saying that uh, no, we don't have any header, because uh, any non-constant variance here. All right, and if we went down here, just looked at our F test. Now the F test is, it's just, I'm just using this here as sort of a backup here to the birch pagan test here, just to show that it sort of, it goes along with our a birch pagan test here. The tested data for our F here was 0.48812 here. Versus that was after we run our relationship here. Our, uh, this was, again, this is testing X independent against those residual squared. Now, comparing that to before our test here, we actually had that was at 52% uh, correlation here for our X and our Y dependent variable. You can see the F test here is pretty good because it's saying that we have a significant relationship here between our F value, our X and Y uh, variables here at 10.89. That's really explained by our X here. Just understand that. Just I'm just looking at this F test here and sort of comparing it to the Birch-Pagan test here really looking at the chi-square here versus the F-test. The F-test is really two different chi-square tests here. But nonetheless, just as I back up here, you can see the, the relationship here because with no uh, heterostastic here, and no, it saying there isn't any because we have such a low Lagrange multiplier versus our critical value, the F-test sort of backs that up. Okay, so that is for the case here where we didn't have, we have a constant variance along our uh, difference, a constant variance here. But let's go look at the second case here. Now this is the case here for that model B, that was that blue line, and we know that's gonna have a non-constant variance here. So let's look at our data here. So again, going back to our test here, Birch-Pagan test, the uh, Lagrange multiplier, let's see how we calculated that. So it's Lagrange multiplier equals R squared times again, n the number of data points. So coming to our B here, our tested data, our R squared, it's it's a stronger 62% relationship here. So the R squared, when we looked at our X independent variable against those residual squared, we have a pretty good strong relationship here, 0.62 or 62%. So we take that R squared here, 0.62, in this case, 97, times a number of data points again, 12 data points here. We're gonna come up with a Lagrange multiplier of 0.755. So let's go look at our, uh, place that on our chi-square chi distribution here. Again, our critical value is 0.384 here, showing it here on our chi-square. So what have we actually come up with? 7.55 here, it's way out here. So yes, we do have that non 
changing variance here based on our Hirsch-Pagan test here using the Lagrange multiplier, the chi-square a distribution here and plotting it out here. So if it we've passed our critical point here at 3.84, we're way past it here at 7.55. So yes, we do have that relationship. Uh, the header stat or a non-constant variance. So we could have you could if you can't you should really do this test even if you can't see it in the data itself. You might have a lot of data points and graphing it out you can't see it, but then you can come up and you can do the test for it. And if we went back to just our regression statistics here for our uh, Excel output here. Okay, so when we did the regression here before before on this model here before where we just regressed our uh, x independent variable against our y dependent variable, we have a very low r square value here 0.25 so we we don't have any relate correlation between the two here uh, for that model here okay so that's telling us something but then when we regressed our independent variable x against the r squared we got a strong relationship here 60.62 or this one here was 0 0.5 0.25 here percent here when we bef our model before we did the r square i regressed our x independent variable against the R squared, but then when we did regress it against our R squared value here, then we got a stronger relationship of 0.62 here. Okay, so you can see here R squared, and it, we go down here and look at our F test here. We got a, when we did our test here, our regression, we actually did get a strong relationship here between, after we did our regression of our X independent against our residual squared is 0.17 here for our F test. Really strong relationship here. And then when we did it before those residuals here, just before we did our test, just looking at X against our Y uh, variable here, we got a 0.34 here. So just for our F test here. So just looking at our F test here and our significance here, that you can correlate your F test here to your chi-square test here. And those two are telling us that, yes, this data is heteroscedastic or not, has a non-changing, or has a changing variance as we move along our, looking at, along our independent X variable as we increase it here. Okay, so just understanding there is a, you can just double check it here, just looking at the F test here versus your chi-square or your Birch Pagan test here. But you want to use the Birch Pagan test here. That's the uh, test that we really want to use. And I'm just looking at uh, doing this F test here as a comparison, just, just to make a comparison here. So again, uh, the case here where our Birch Pagan test based on our chi square here, when we have, when we got to come up with that Lagrange multiplier, that equals our R squared value in this case, whatever R squared you have for the regression of your X in your independent variables against your residual squared here. You come up with an R squared value. You take that, in this case, 0.62 here, times the number of data points or observations you're looking at. You come up with, the, that gives you your Lagrange multiplier, and you take that value, you take it, you have to figure out your chi-square distribution based on, uh, and that's based on the probability and also the degrees of freedom here that you have to use. And you put that into your Excel equation, you come up with some critical value, and then you can uh, lay that out here in your chi-square diagram. And then if you have a, uh, a Lagrange multiplier that is less than the critical value, then you'd say no, there is, it's a, it's a constant variance here. But if it's greater than your critical value on your chi-squared here, that Lagrange multiplier here that it is in this case, then yes, you do have that changing variance or that header scedastic relationship. And you'd have to make some corrections for that. There's different ways of making corrections for that here when you're doing your uh, linear regression here. But I'm just showing it how we had to do our test here. Okay, so that'll summarize our discussion.